Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a complex equation. We have cosine theta equals A plus 1 over A and we're going to be solving for theta. What else could you solve for? Not for A, right? Obviously, because A is a given number. And let me tell you, first of all, I, I want to pose a question like, why do you think this appears on a channel that focuses on complex numbers. What does this have to do with complex numbers, first of all? Well, all real numbers are complex, but we want to keep it non-real most of the time, right? So here's one thing to keep in mind. Cosine theta is between negative 1 and 1 inclusive if theta is real. What happens on the opposite side of the world or in the complex world? In the complex world, things are different and very complicated or maybe uh, complexified or complex. And this is what happens. A plus 1 over A, if you think about it and look at different values, for example, let's experiment. What if A is equal to 1? Then this becomes, let's just call this F of A. It becomes F of 1 equals 2. What is F of 2? It's 2 plus 1 half, which is 5 halves. What is F of 0? Undefined. Great. What is F of 1 half? Uh-oh, it's the same as F of 2. Nice, because A and 1 over A are reciprocals. The reciprocal of the reciprocal idea, right? So th there is a symmetry. But also notice that we can replace A with negative 1. That should give us negative 2. If you use something like negative 10, that will be negative 10 minus 1 over 10, which is going to be the opposite of 101 over uh, negative 101 over 10, which is like uh, negative 10.1. Have you noticed something about all these results? And you can do this infinitely many times, not infinitely many times, but finitely many times maybe you can do it. And you're going to get always something that is um, greater than 1 or less than negative 1. Uh-oh. We didn't just talk about, didn't we say that if theta is real, then sine cosine theta is going to be between negative 1 and 1 inclusive, right? But looks like here it's never on that interval. It's outside. So if sine and cosine are supposed to be like this, I don't know if this is a valid way to write it. It's not very rigorous, but who cares, right? So I'm not that rigorous anyways. But this is only true when theta is real, and we're outside that interval. Have you noticed? Yes. Which means theta is not real. I mean, it's not explicitly given in the problem, but it's kind of implicit, right? You kind of have to infer this from the given. So... First of all, let's establish that theta is going to be non-real, okay? If you know what to expect, it's probably a little easier. And then we're going to get on with the solution. How do you solve it? You know that, okay, a plus 1 over a is going to be greater than 1 or negative 1. By the way, when is it greater than 1 and when is it less than negative 1? If a is positive, so we can kind of uh, write the values of this expression as a piecewise defined whatever. It's 2, oh, actually, no. It's not equals, it's greater than, okay, great. It's greater than 2 if A is positive. Uh, oh, this didn't work. Okay, anyways, this is what I was trying to say. I couldn't write it like that. So I should probably use the absolute value, but anyways, um, it's, this, is what I'm, this is what I mean. A plus 1 over A is greater than 2 if A is positive. A plus 1 over A is less than negative 2 if A is negative. Make sense? This is what I was talking about. Okay, great. So now we know that if we're outside that interval, we're going to go ahead and solve it. But how do you solve it? I mean, if you were given something like cosine theta equals 2, how would you solve this, right? You can't really look for an angle whose cosine is 2 because if you draw a triangle, think about this. This is cosine. So 2 over 1, uh-oh, the hypotenuse cannot be shorter than the leg. And if you use Pythagorean theorem, this should give you uh, root 3i. Uh-oh, maybe that should give me an idea. This looks like a somewhat special triangle, right? With the root 3i and 2, maybe I should look at the tangent. Mm, tangent is not that special. So anyways, I take it back. But you get the idea. We, we get imaginary solutions from here, which is weird. So that means you can't really find it by looking at special angles because this is a super special angle, okay? It's not real. So here's what we need to do. 
we need to go back to the basics of complex numbers. And if you're new to complex numbers, by the way, go ahead and check out my lecture videos. I know some people are annoyed that I keep repeating this information. I could put it in the description. I'll probably put it in the description too, but I'd like to say it too, because some people may be new to the channel and they might be new to the complex numbers as well. So it doesn't hurt to say this, right? Hopefully. Now, how do we solve a problem like this? We're gonna use the uh, complex definitions of sine and cosine. Do they exist? Yes. Thanks to Euler, we have the following. Cosine theta can be written as e to the i theta plus e to the negative i theta divided by two. And let me tell you where this comes from real quick, so without getting into the proof. Uh, I don't wanna to spend too much time on this, but you can definitely, like I said earlier, you can check out the lecture videos, we go over these things. So now, e to the i theta is equal to this, and from here you can get that by replacing theta with negative theta, getting another equation, manipulating them. So we now have an equation with this, so we can kind of set these equal to each other. Great, let's do it. We have a plus one over a equals e to the i theta plus e to the negative i theta divided by two. Awesome. And what's our goal? Our goal is actually, I wrote it the wrong way. You know what? I should write this on the left-hand side, but no worries. I'm gonna go ahead and copy the left-hand side and we'll make it the right-hand side, so we'll be good. Just transpose it or transform it, whatever. Okay, you gotta remember, our goal is to solve for theta, not for a. a is a given number, so we're gonna be finding the answer for any value of a. Of course, we have to specify different cases if that's the case. Okay, cool. Let's go ahead and first cross multiply. That's gonna give us two a plus two over a. And then we wanna write the e to the negative i theta as one over e to the i theta. And I know some of you are like, oh, the rest is easy. I can do this in five seconds. No, you can't. Uh, stop lying. Uh, you could probably do it in a minute, but uh, some people say they can do it in five seconds. Maybe they can, who knows? So we're gonna go ahead and call this something. How about w? Why not z, right? Because we didn't, we didn't use z for anything, did we? No, we didn't. So let's go ahead and call that z. This will be one over z. So we have z plus one over z equals two a plus two over a. If I factor out a two, this will be two times a plus one over a, oh, almost. Imagine you had a plus one over a instead of two a plus two over a, you could say z equals a or one over a, right? That'd be awesome. But sorry, everything is doubled. But no worries, we can still solve it. Maybe z is equal to two over a, right? or 2a. If z is 2a, okay, I'm just gonna test something real quick. If z is 2a, we get 2a plus one over 2a. Uh-oh, that's not the same thing as two over a. Maybe for some values of a, they might be equal. Let's find out. 4a is a, which means a is zero. Uh-oh, it's not gonna work. Too bad. So this didn't work, so we kinda need to proceed with what we have, okay? So let's do it. Forget about the doubling thing. We just have to solve it. How do you solve it? We can use the quadratic formula. Must multiply everything by z. z squared plus one equals two a plus two over a multiplied by z. And then you can kind of bring this all together on the same side to make a full quadratic. Instead equal to zero, nice. Now, what do you do with this? Probably to make your life a little easier, I would call this b, okay, another variable or another given number and just set it equal to b for now, and later on you can back substitute, because uh, solving something with b is probably gonna look a little nicer, and then we can replace it, okay. So from here, z becomes what, negative b, I mean, the opposite of negative b, <laughs> whatever, plus minus the square root of b squared minus four, divided by two a, which is two. Not the same a, by the way. I shouldn't use an a, maybe. So, what do you do? Uh, replace b with what it is. It's 2a plus 2 over a. 2a plus 2 over a. It wasn't very hard, actually, to do it directly, but anyways. I like substitution. What can I do? I can't help it. So, from here, do you think this is going to simplify a little bit? Possibly. Let's find out. I'm going to expand the radical, uh, inside the radical. It's going to be 4a squared plus 4 over a squared minus plus, I mean, 2ab. Okay, minus four. And then all of that is divided by two. Now let's see, A's cancel out. This is two times two times two, which is eight. Minus four is four. Beautiful. That gives me four A squared plus four over A squared 
plus 4 under the radical. We have 2a plus 2 over a plus minus all over 2a. And this is z. You like that? Okay. Depending on the value of z. Wait a minute. Didn't you say these, z is going to be complex? Where does the complex complexity come in? I don't know. Somewhere, hopefully. But from here, uh, you, we can do a couple things. Uh, make a common denominator and take the 4 out. And then simplify. So it's going to look like this. a plus 1 over a plus minus. Now forget uh, the 4. You have a squared plus 1 over a squared plus 1. Something like this. And then if I make a common denominator, it'll be a to the fourth plus a squared plus 1 divided by a squared. And that should be the answer. But looks like this is not complex. Maybe it is. Who knows? Where does that come from? Okay, maybe I'm forgetting something here. Let us know if you can spot any errors. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.